back happy hookers and welcome to day four of 12 days of coasters so today we're going to be taking a look at this lovely scalloped edge flat circle coaster um, now if you're a regular here you'll know how much i love a flat circle and this time we're going to be trying something we haven't done before which is a flat circle using the half double crochet um, and then we're going to be creating these um, these lovely scalloped edges um, by placing seven groups of half double crochets around. So let's get started. I'm going to be using Sheepy's Soft Fun for this, one of my absolute favourites, um, and a 4.5 millimetre hook. I've also got a little bit of um, sunlight shining through, so I'm hoping that that won't cause too much of an issue, but we may have to shut the blinds. Um, so like any circle, we're going to start with a magic circle. So I'll go quite slow, but again, if you're new to the magic circle, what I'll do is I'll pop a link above. All right, so let's start with our magic circle. So we're going to place, oh, I've got some pen on my finger. Please excuse that. Oh, it actually matches the color of my yarn. <laughs> so we're going to place our yarn over our two fingers like this, wrapping it round like so, bringing it back over and across the front like so. So let's try that one more time. So we place it over two fingers and wrap it around the back, wrap it around the front, flip our fingers over, crisscrossing and holding it with our ring finger. So we place a hook underneath the underneath one, picking up the one on top. And then what I like to do is scoop it through like this and then I twizzle it, can you see? So that I've created myself a crisscross, allow me to hop back over here, pick up that back one and pull it through to create my magic circle. Like I said, um, I'll pop a link above to more in depth if you're unfamiliar. If you want, I would simply chain three, join the chains together to form a circle um, and you're away. So the half double crochet, we, I generally start with eight in the centre. So if you've done single crochet um, circles before, we tend to start with a six. If you've done double crochet um, circles, I tend to start with 10. It makes sense that a stitch that's halfway between a single and a double, we start with eight. So we're going to yarn over, insert into our loop, Yarn over, pull back through, three loops on our hook. We're going to then yarn over and pull through all three. So we'll try that one more time. So we're going to yarn over, insert in, yarn over, pull back through three, yarn over. And I will pop some chapters on, so if you are a little bit more of an advanced crochet yet and you just want to get your eight in the center and skip to the next row, then please do. Okay, so yarn over inserting into our loop, or if you've got a, um, a chain of three, just inserting into that centre point. First part of the stitch done, second part is simply to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So a very simple stitch. We yarn before we insert, and when we pull back through we have three, and then we yarn over and we complete the stitch. Wonderful, so I've got four there, so I need five, Six. Oh, forgot to yarn over first. Six, seven, eight. And for regulars out there, you know what's about to happen next is obviously I'm going to count two, four, six, seven, eight. Yep, that one's just sort of sneaking itself down the side there. Oh, actually, no, I'm probably, yes, I'm going to count that one. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yes. We're going to pull it closed with our magic circle noise, which always goes a little bit something like this. Oh, there we go, nice quick one today. So we are going to be working in joined rounds. Anything over a single crochet, I think um, joined rounds are always for the best. So in order to join the round, I like to count back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's my eighth stitch. I'm going to place a slip stitch in. 
Now, if you want to use stitch markers to help you keep your place, um, then that's absolutely fine. I tend to find with a half double crochet, I can very easily see where the beginning is, but it can still be quite a small stitch for people. Um, so I do appreciate if you want to use um, a stitch marker or a piece of thread, um, then please do. So we're always going to chain one and we're always going to ignore that chain one and then we're always going to crochet straight back into the same place that we've placed that we came out of here to so this one here. So in true circular fashion, we always double on the first go our stitches. So we have eight here and we're going to place an increase in every stitch. So that's two half double crochets in every stitch, taking our circle of eight up to a circle of 16. So we're going to place two straight into that first one, like so. And then we're going to place two in every stitch all the way around. I absolutely love the half double crochet. Honestly, I think it's one of the most seamless stitches you can create. I think it's more just the action of that scooping first and then inserting in, and then the fact that you can just pull through all three. Really, really nice. Okay. Ooh, our tails interrupting us there. Let's grab that other way. I'm actually trying a slightly different way of filming. Um, this rather than trying to look through um, the lens and the viewfinder as I crochet I've actually put it a lot higher so that I can actually just concentrate on the crochet and I'm hoping that's going to one help me um, stay in in focus and in shot um, because I have often veered off the camera um, which isn't particularly good for those learning. Okay, so I, let's have a quick count up. Always have a count up. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Wonderful. So we're going to be missing this one here. Don't worry about this one um, because that's not a true stitch. What we're going to do is we're going to just hop over here and we're going to place our slip stitch into the first one of the previous round and then just pull everything nice and tight and we're away. Perfect, so chain one and ignore it. So after, I can say so a lot, I need to think of another word. So for the next round, we will be placing eight increases. In any circle, take the number you first put in the very first round, in this case eight, and you know that you're always going to have eight increases. Think of it as eight sections. So I will be doing eight increases all the way around and I'll be bridging those increases with single crochets. So for this round, I am only going to need to place one single crochet in between every increase because I have 16 stitches. So we're going to place one single crochet not single crochet, I do apologise, one half double crochet. And then we're going to place an increase. So that's popping two stitches into the same place. Then we're going to place just one half double crochet on its own. And then we're going to place another increase. So very nice and easy round, alternating an increase with a lone stitch, so I'll recall it which will increase our round of 16 stitches by eight, taking it up to 24. Now, if at any point as you're crocheting along, if you're talking like I am, or you're, um, you know, you're listening to something or you're watching something, you might think, oh no, what have I done? Uh, oh, I can't remember what I, where I'm at. Take it out and just take a look and start to familiarize yourself if you're not already with what an increase looks like and the best way is just to pop your hook in the bottom and how many stitches can I see coming from that well I can clearly see two pop myself in the bottom okay there's only one there that's fine so I know that I've just done an increase I've just done a single stitch next to it so I must have an increase next circular crochet can you can love it or you can hate it um, because it can be very easy to 
um, to miss a step, to end up with not enough stitches, to end up with too many. Okay, so we're just alternating that increase with that single stitch on its own, that half double crochet. So I placed, so I'm seeing it again. So I had my single and I have my increase. So what that means is I want to be ending on an increase. So can you see I've just ended on an increase here? If you'd like to count, what you could just do is you could count your groups of three because you know that you need eight groups of three, your increase and your single. So you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lovely. What you're going to then do is slip stitch, slip stitch into the top of that first stitch by inserting your hook and pulling your yarn through the stitch and straight through the loop. And then you're ready for round three. So we're going to chain one and place a single crochet straight into single. I keep saying single crochet, but it's a half double crochet. I do apologize. Place our first stitch into this row is exactly the same as the last row in that it's going to have eight increases because we've got eight sections and we need to place an increase in each section and we're going to bridge those increases with lone stitches the half double crochet so if you're any good with maths you'll know that that means we need to place two lone stitches two half double crochets in between our increases so I'm going to place another half double crochet next to and then I know I need to place my increase here. So I'm essentially making eight sections of four stitches made up of the two lone and the increase. I'm taking a section of three stitches and I'm making it into a section of four stitches. Here's Moomin, you should come up soon. She always comes squeaking up the, camp, up the stairs when I'm filming my two lone stitches. I've never called them lone stitches before, but I think I quite like that. My loans and my increases. So my increase, two more half double crochets and an increase here. If you've never used Sheepy Soft One before, I would definitely recommend getting it because you can pull your yarn from the center of your ball um, and your ball stays exactly where it is, it's amazing. Okay, so two half double crochets and an increase. Two half double crochets and an increase. If you've never used the half double crochet, I guarantee by the end of this you will think, wow, I like that a lot. The beauty of it is it's a little bit bigger than the single but unlike the double crochet it doesn't create too much of a gap in between. It's not that tall, it's still got a little bit of chunk to it, nice chunky stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to have a quick check um, that I've got my two singles and my increase and my two singles. And when I say singles here I'm referring to single stitches not single crochets. That's why I swapped to loans, not to confuse people. So I'm about to do another increase here. So just remember we're doing an increase followed by two separate stitches. Well, we're actually doing two separate stitches followed by an increase if you want to be picky because we should be ending here on an increase. So I'm choosing to do the increases at the end of the sections. And I don't always, sometimes I do the increases at the beginning, it just really depends on preference. Okay, slip stitch. And now we're ready for round five. I had to think about it then, I was like one, two, three, four, quick say five. Round five, exactly the same, an increase, eight increases. And this time we're gonna be placing three half double crochets in between those increases. So three lone half double crochets and it's amazing. You're just literally going up one every time. So I'm going to place my one 
my two, my three, and then I'm ready for my increase. So one, two, three, there's Moomin, can you hear her? And my increase. She actually has to jump up on a chair to a desk to the other side of the room and then she walks across all the desks until she comes around to the part where I'm filming. So it's possible that a furry tail may appear on screen. What a little diva. So three and an increase. And I often just sit with a notebook. If I'm doing a large circle, I'll sit with a notebook and I'll write three when I know I'm on the the round that I'm doing, you know, three, three lone stitches and then I'll write four. And it just helps you keep on track, definitely, if you're not using any kind of formal pattern. Because once you've got the technique of the circle down and you know, okay, I need to do an increase, um, six increases, 18, however many you're doing, and your single stitches in between, all you need to make sure is you're, you're just, you know which row you're on. Um, sometimes I like to count up to the number of stitches I'm creating. So as we're doing a, a three lone and a double, we're creating five stitches. So sometimes I might go one, two, three, and then I know my four and fives are together. So four and five is my join. So that's all I'm doing in my mind is I'm going one, two, three, four and five are together. And that can be quite an easy technique. One, two, three, four and five are together. And we're ready for our slip stitch. Brilliant. So I'm just going to refer back to this one that we can see that we're not far off. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So we've only got one more round to go. And the good reason that we've got one more round, if I just refer back to my notebook, is I believe we need a um, an outside of 48 stitches to make the scallop work. Yes, we do. We need a multiple, we need a multiple of six, essentially. Um, to make the scallop work in the way that it does. So last round, chain, and then it's going to be four lone stitches. So one, two, three, four. I've now got both of my cats in the room and they've decided to clean themselves. So all I can hear is in the background and then an increase I really need to rename my channel from crochet and tea to crochet and tea with cats that like to um, like to video bomb my tutorials wonderful so we're placing our stitches so we're doing groups of six this time so one two three four and then five and six go together. That might be a nice way to think about it. One, two, three, four, and then five and six go together. I can't wait to listen to this back and see if you can actually hear my cats profusely cleaning themselves. One, two, three, four, five and six. If there are anybody, if there is anybody, is there anybody out there? If there are any crochets out there that um, are hardcore circle crocheters, I'd love to know what techniques you, um, you employ to help keep yourself on track, you know, in terms of the counting. Um, how, how do you approach that? to make sure that you, you know that you're going up to the next um, 
you know, the next round with the right number and help keep those numbers in your mind. It's interesting, isn't it, how we we sort of form these these tips. Well, not they're not tips, they're techniques, aren't they? How we form these techniques to help us um, help us accomplish. So I think I've gone too many there actually. One, two, three, four. Oh no, I just need to place another one in here. And you'll notice it has got a little bit of a um, a point and a few sides. Do not worry, that is simply because I've placed all my increases at the same place. Um, but with a stitch like a half double crochet, I mean, look, you can pretty much obliterate them with like a tiny little bit of manipulation. There are some techniques where we do move our increases about to prevent this from happening, but that, you're talking on a much larger scale where they're going to be a lot more obvious. Almost at the end, awesome. Two, three, four, five and six go together. And then one, two, three, four, five. Picked a little rogue bit of yarn up there. I don't want it to affect my stitch. There we go. Six. And then we're going to slip stitch. And there we are. We are now ready to um, place our scalloping. Scalloping, scalloping. It's a strange word, isn't it? So. So, oh my goodness, please count. If I counted how many times I've said so in this video, it would be one of those hilarious um, Christmas drinking games. Although we drink aware, I'm not advocating drinking alcohol. It could be a shot of lemonade every time I say so. It doesn't have to be uh, anything stronger. You're going to place seven half double crochets into one stitch to create the scallop. And in between the places you place, the places you place, it's a very wordy day today, isn't it? In between the stitches in which you place your seven half double crochets, you're going to bridge them by a slip stitch. So the slip stitch is going to be anchoring down. And in between the slip stitch and the place where the half double crochets are is a jump of two, jump of two. So as we already have a half double crochet in this stitch here, I mean a slip stitch in this stitch here, if we jump this one and this one, make sure you're definitely not jumping the one that you've actually slip stitched into. So look at the post going down here. And the post always sits a little bit to the right of the stitch, I mean to the left. <laughs> left of the stitch so here's the stitch and here's the post we're going to jump to this one here the third one along so if we yarn over and insert our hook in and then yarn over and yarn over and pull back through now this bit will look a bit alien and you'll be thinking oh it's crushed it it's pulled it together do not worry just yarn over go back into the same place and place another half double crochet honestly do not worry just keep going three, four, and as you start to get more in, you'll think, oh, okay, it's actually starting to, to work quite well. So five, six, seven. It will be a bit of a beast to get seven in. And then you'll see you've created your shell. So as I mentioned, we'll be anchoring them with slip stitches and missing two stitches in between. Now this is the bit where you need to be careful. A lot of stitches into one stitch can obscure the next stitch. If I lifted this up here, if I were to lift this up, I would see there's a stitch here. Can you see? But that has obscured it. And if I hadn't have um, lifted that up, I might have thought this was the next stitch. And if that's the case, you're going to get all the way around to here and think, oh, I don't have very many scallops in, um, which is fine. But the worst thing is if it doesn't quite match up. I mean, if you're one scallop less by some mathematical miracle, that's fine as long as it matches up. So 
make sure we're skipping definitely skipping the one next to it and this one and into this one here this third one along is where we're going to be placing our slip stitch to anchor our scallop down and then skipping two into the third one along start again with our grouping of seven half double crochets so three four five six seven okay so seven half double crochets okay I'm back after my grocery delivery as we are in tier three at the moment so we are not going out skipping two placing that slip stitch skipping two and placing seven half double crochets once you have mastered the technique of scalloped edges you'll find yourself thinking what can i apply this to what can i add this to one two three four five six seven and once your hands get used to placing lots of stitches into the same space, which can be tricky because you do feel you will feel like you're forcing them in. Um, once you realise, you know that they they will go. <laughs> they are designed to fit into the stitches. Okay, so when we're getting there, three, four, five, six seven I admit remembering to count these ones um, is probably a good idea because they're not the easiest to actually count in the scallops so I'm curious to know um, how a lot how many of the 12 days of coasters have you watched um, and are you enjoying them and also I mean I'm only on day when well, I'm just de filming day four I have Day five, I'm just looking around my uh, my desk. Five, six, seven, eight. I've got, I think I've got day eight planned, but that still leaves me four more days and I haven't actually designed any coasters yet. I think we're going to be doing a few square ones because I've got some really, you know, some of my top favorite texture stitches that we're going to be using, um, certainly. In fact, let's practice a count. Count the posts is probably easier, three, Yes, I've got seven there, thankfully. So yes, if there's anything you'd like me to have a go at, a shape or um, anything themed, um, pop a link down, pop a link, <laughs> pop a comment down below um, and I'll definitely consider it. Um, certainly, um, I'll be planning and filming, you know, over and basically doing the week's worth at the weekend. Um, so it's possible that by the time this one airs, there'll be time just to squeeze some in at the end. Or if there's anything Christmassy, I don't know if you've seen my Christmas tree. Um, if there's anything Christmassy that you'd like me to take a look at, I'll definitely be up for doing um, some specials towards the end, um, the end of the year, just to get, you know, a little last minute festive bits in. Okay, so skipping and slip stitching. So skipping to... And placing seven here so I will crochet along with you to the end as I know the last couple of videos um, which were posted okay three four five six seven I know the last couple of videos that I posted I am um, I didn't can continue all the way with you. I did um, leave kind of the instructions to complete um, simply because it's probably a little bit easier for you visually um, to have that as a reference as opposed to having to then keep watching along with me. The cats are going to come running up the stairs together in a minute. Four. Five six seven amazing we are at the end so skip skip and our slip stitch if you've hit it right we'll be slip stitching into that place where the slip stitch came out of at the very beginning of the round 
and the wonderful thing about this is it probably won't I mean I would block it I would spray it with a little bit of water look that has popped up a tiny little bit um, but that's not because of tension or anything it's simply just because um, of the way the strange way yarn works it's not necessarily fighting against it it lays flat perfectly um, I tend to just pop on my ironing board spritz them with a little bit of water I don't even pin them down and then overnight and there you go and I've now got two matching ones so thank you ever so much for joining me for this um, circular scalloped coaster in half double crochet if you liked it please give the video a thumbs up it really helps the channel and it helps tell other people um, that you like this video and that they might like it and it puts it in front of lots of um, you know other crocheters that might be following along so do let me know in the comments how you're enjoying 12 days of coasters let me know like I said if there's anything you'd like me to make from a coaster point of view or a Christmas point of view um, as always if you do want to um, turn on notifications so you'll um, get a notification of my next video which will be up in two days that will be fantastic um, but I'm not a huge um, advocate of plugging the you know subscribe turn on the notification bell because it can get a little bit tedious so whatever works for you um, happy hooking and I'll see you soon bye